The next product is collodion. Collodion is a solution of nitrocellulose in organic solvents, the usual being ether and alcohol. So the example of organic solvents commonly used are ether and alcohol as the carrier. So the nitrocellulose is actually a type of uh, um, polymer okay, that, um, that uh, make the, the product useful to uh, in the treatment of cuts and wounds. So after the application on the wound surface, the solvent will evaporate uh, leaving a layer of cellulose okay, on the skin to protect the wound. Uh, so the protection will allow the healing of the wound. Um, actually, there's not much uh, collodion available uh, in the clinical setting. So one example is the Duofil, which is a collodion product containing also salicylic acid and lactic acid. So this is for the treatments of warts. Um, the salicylic acid will, ex, uh, will exfoliate the skin cells slowly with daily application and use. So, uh, uh, so uh, as the product contains this uh, nitrocellulose, the product is a bit of, uh, a bit, um, I would say, uh, thick, okay? It's not really a flowy, a common, commonly flowy uh, solution. It's, uh, it's a bit thicker. Um, with the evaporation of the solvent, uh, the layer of protection will form on uh, the the warts okay so with uh, the presence of salicylic acid uh, the skin cells that form the warts will clearly uh, will slowly be exfoliated uh, and finally the warts will uh, disappear the next type is eardrops so eardrops uh, i think you are familiar with this uh, dosage form Eardrop is a dosage form that contains medication in the form of solution or suspension. So it may contain water, glycerol, alcohol, uh, diluted alcohol, uh, of course, and propylene glycol. <clears throat> it is commonly formulated to treat infection of the ear uh, or soften the ear wax. Uh, so it, this is more of a local effect. It's not for, uh, for systemic effect usually. Uh, the active ingredient would depends on the indicated use. So if it's for treatment of uh, infection, so there shall be an antibiotic as an example, chloramphenicol, okay, um, or sodium bicarbonate eardrop that, uh, or glycerol eardrop commonly used to soften the earwax. Um, it should be placed in a small bottle with a glass dropper tube and a rubber tea or any other disposable squeezable bottles with a dropper device because it needs to be dropped into the ear so dropper is important so how uh, actually to instill ear drops so so uh, you have to um you have to tell your patient uh, that if you drop just directly uh, into the ear canal uh, uh, as the ear canal is a bit um you know the root is not straight okay the root inside the ear canal is not straight um, the the flow of the drops that you instill into the ear might not reach the inner side of the ear. So thus, it is very important for the patient to pull the ear loop up and to the back. Okay, up and to the back. Uh, I can't show you, okay, because you can't see my ear. Uh, but you have to pull the ear loop up and to the back to allow the drops or to help the drops to run down the ear canal and uh, have to tell the patient to keep the head tilted for two to five minutes so uh, so it's uh, better if the patient can lie down okay and and let the drops uh, uh, run down the ear canal until the uh, targeted area so example is the ceramol ear drops contain arachis oil a type of fixed oil and chlorbutanol for removal of earwax so this is for impacted earwax Bmycin, a type of ear drops which contain gentamicin and betamethasone, um, uh, as an antibiotic based ear drops. Nasal drops or nasal spray. Uh, nasal drops or spray is a dosage form specifically made to deliver drugs into the nose cavity. It can be used in the treatment of local ailments involving the nose and paranasal sinuses, such as the allergy and sinusitis. Um, so you can see in the market there's a few types of uh, nasal spray okay some of them contain steroids okay for the treatment of sinusitis may also be suitable for systemic drug delivery and needle free vaccination um, 
uh, as the availability of mucosal area in the nose is suitable for dry absorption. But this is not applicable yet at the moment and this is more like the advanced drug delivery system um, and more research uh, needed okay, to, to ensure that the absorption is sufficient uh, for systemic delivery. But at the moment, what we have is uh, products for local delivery, okay, for local effect. Uh, as an example, the, st the Sterima uh, nasal spray is used to clean the nose for babies. Okay, uh, it contains actually sodium chloride water. So, uh, spraying into the nose can help to clear the blocked nose. So, the same as nasal douche I explained earlier on, uh, this product is also uh, suitable or also useful for the treatment of uh, blocked nose. Okay, but this is uh, only spraying and not uh, douching as uh, uh, the case of nasal douche. Um, so usually nasal drops and nasal spray are liquid based and powder uh, can be liquid based or powder based nasal delivery formulation uh, but uh, they are actually more liquid based as compared to powder based. Um, okay, nasal sprays are more in use as compared to nasal drops. Uh, nasal drops um, is a bit uh, trickier as compared to spray. Okay. Uh, but uh, there, there are products uh, of nasal drops also in the market. Nasal drops and nasal sprays are useful to deliver normal saline, as an example, nasal decongestant for infants to clear blocked nose, or steroids, uh, as I, I mentioned earlier on, for allergy and sinusitis. Preservatives such as mesalconium chloride has been used in traditional spray pumps, but due to some safety issues, preservative-free products were also produced. Um, so there are some patients who are se sensitive to uh, preservatives okay, that may ag uh, aggravate their, uh, uh, their medical problem. Uh, this is especially uh, more, sensi uh, more important for patients with the, the allergy problem. Okay? Um, so example of products are fluticasone nasal drops and sterima nasal sprays.